Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 20th of September. It's the Asia edition. Uh, today we got Contributor Spotlight, Jenkins Elections, a diagnosis session, figuring out what's going on with Jenkins Release Candidate email notification, and then Plugin Bomb New Maintainers with a tutorial on Plugin Bomb. And then we may if we have time, talk about other topics. For me, those would already be enough and I have a hard stop in 30 minutes. Chris, anything else you want to be sure we cover? No. Nope. Okay, all right. So F for your information, Contributor Spotlight, Olivier Lamy's Spotlight went live last week uh, and the next contributor is already in the queue. Jenkins election announcement. I have the action item from governance board to announce that voter registration is now open and nominations are closed. Six nominees for three positions, including Chris Stern. Chris, thanks for being willing to be to run for election as a member of potential member of the Jenkins governance board. You're welcome. And I'll submit the poll request uh, likely tomorrow. I'm kind of tired today. And so tomorrow is the best I can claim to do. All right, so next topic then, diagnose the email notification. So Chris, could you describe it was that the Jenkins core release was published, right? So when I look, oh, I so. when I look here, I see 2.462.3 RC published yep. yesterday. So there's the release candidate, but you, we, you were expecting to see an action that would send email notification. Yep, but when you check it, it's not there. So first item in the list, just undo, yeah, that one. Okay, so here is 2.462 RC, and you're saying even this one did not get delivered. I think I, at least I didn't receive it. Okay, well, so is it possible for us to run this? No. Interesting. Okay, so I wonder what is the what is the trigger event that causes it to execute? Okay, so all right. Here's a good message. The following action use a jet deprecated Node.js version. So it might be that they've switched us off. Shall we look at the, the code for it and see what the code says? Here, we can even look at it on GitHub. We don't have to look at it here, do we? We don't have to bring up my text editor. So dot GitHub workflows, announce LTS RC. So post on discourse. Send to S to Gmail SMTP. I don't see any reference to Node anywhere in that. Do you see a reference to something that's running Node.js? Uh, it could be the users action. So the action sent mail could be that one. Use actions. E A W I D D 6 slash action sent mail. Line 19. There we go. Ah, oh, okay. I see this one. This one could be, all right, well, so let's, and how do we find, how do we check to see if there's a newer version of that? Um, I think it's like we have no permission to update that one, but we can check it out on GitHub. Okay, so David W, David D6. And so, da, da wid. Okay, so that would be in a repository that is like this, is that right? I would expect it to be in a repository, something mm -hmm. like exactly. that. Yeah. Okay, and there is a version 3.12.0 that was released May the 23rd, and we're using V3, so we should be running that 3.20.0 so is the problem then that somehow it just didn't get invoked? Because if we look at the action, I see this one, 
but I don't see a way to, well, okay, how does, how does it choose to be invoked? Maybe we've just used a different. Let's say if you, if you pick pre-release, it's supposed to pick it up and then what is new version or new like a version of the email. Yeah. So is that, well, so is it, uh, but what, what triggers it? I was assuming it's triggered by something that, oh, well, we could certainly try to rerun this. Yeah, sure. I have no idea what that's going to do. If it knows specifically about this version. So job post, no, those are the tasks it's performing. Oh, now that's interesting. It failed. Title has already been used. <laughs> okay, so I can't just rerun it that way. I have to, I just as well delete that run. Okay, so I can't just rerun it. Let's do a delete workflow run because that's wasted. Okay. Oops. Nope. That deleted more than I wanted, Chris. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any way to, to launch it. So it doesn't have a facility to interactively launch it. So there must be something here that's detecting types pre-release yeah, okay if, so if this is pre-release version it should do it so if you check like the release um we've made yesterday it should be a pre-release version too. okay so let's go look at that core and if we look at 2.470 it's labeled as a pre-release if yep. i edit it 2.462.3 rc Okay, is there any difference at set as a pre-release? Now, is there any difference between it and, and other pre-releases? So if I look at other pre-releases, let's look at 2.462.1. I don't see any difference there. Do yeah. you see any anything significant? No. Yeah, hmm. It's clearly set as a pre-release. You can try to get it action on. So there have been past failures. Yeah, that one has stopped it, I think. Ah, okay. So, oh, and this one has been attempted three times. Yeah. So it passed and then was attempted again. Okay, so that has the same, same sort of behavior. I am not seeing it, Chris. I don't see. We could look for event push actor no let's just do event push no nope, that didn't help okay so what is more about it so it was type pre-released and it's really pre-released not pre-release It's not that that line has somehow been changed recently. Okay, so dot GitHub workflows announce LTS release. 
anything here that is okay this discourse thing was updated but other than that all the other lines are actually original code that's been working yep okay i'm completely perplexed chris i don't understand but i'm also perfectly okay sending the email the announcement email manually yeah so I don't, I don't object. We could just change the documentation that says send the email manually because the announcement workflow is, is not firing reliably on pre-released. Yeah, I, I guess the other we could try is we could, we could always, can we, we could delete this release and try it again, copy the text. Okay. I mean, do you want to try anything wild like that? Do you want to do it? Because like, you may have different permissions from what I do, so. Oh, that's possible. I hadn't thought of that. You can try it first. You don't mind if, if I risk the... Uh... No, it's fine. Okay, so why did that not... Oh, there it is. 2.462.3. Okay, so... Do I have in my cut buffer? Yes, I do. Okay, good. So in my cut buffer, so I delete. Yes. Okay. Now we're going to draft a new release. Choose a tag. Jenkins dash. 2.462.3 RC. 2.462.3 RC like that set as a pre-release publish let's check the actions okay actions announce and there oh, it is yeah, now it it's running it just, doesn't, it just doesn't work for me Okay, so maybe there's a difference between you and me, except I yeah. don't have any particular exotic, I can't even access Ooh. repository options. I think they changed the permissions, so is that it might be why. So I'm not I'm not allowed to use that action. Oh, oh, that could be. Okay. So so this did the announce. Now what we should see. Well, what's it doing? Is it, is it, it's running or is it, okay, it's running and has skipped all these things. Oh no, that's publish artifact. That's a different job. Let's look at. Let's check your email. Announce LTSRC. Here it is. And it says that it ran. Okay. So now we're going to check email. Yeah, just privately, maybe. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay, okay. So here, I'll show it on screen. Jenkins release bot just declared it's available. Yeah, because I think it's like my permissions. It's not like um, sufficient. Ah, okay. Yeah. And I, I, that's, that's sort of weird, right? Because you have permission to create the release. Yeah, definitely. Strange. Because I think they changed up their some permissions before not long ago, so it might be why. Okay. Yeah. So so this should we up? Shall we update the uh, the checklist and warn that if it doesn't appear, go ahead and see where yeah. would we find that? Uh, that's. All right, so in the checklist, check for the, that, that RC email sent. Okay, now someplace in this, 
there is a template, right? Issue template one, LTS release checklist. Okay, so RC creation. Okay, merge the backporting. Retrieve the URL. Okay. Publish a pre-release. Confirm the automatic announcement has been sent. If the automatic amount announcement is not sent, create the announcement, send the announcement, compose and send the announcement yourself. Oh. What do you think of that? Okay. okay, so let's see. It looks like this. If the automatic announcement is not sent, compose and send the announcement yourself. Oh, interesting. If automatic announce fails, send the usual way. Stern did not have permission to, or I'm not even sure if that's the case. So the release created by Chris Stern did not run, run the GitHub action, send the to post the email notification, to post the notification, the notifications release created by Mark Waite did. Not clear why, but assume there are differences in permission. Fair enough. Okay, done, sent, submitted. Thanks, Chris, that was good. Welcome. Okay. Diagnosis resulted in a documentation change. Very good, all right. Okay, we've only got a few minutes left. Are you okay with getting a brief tutorial of the plugin bill of materials? Yep. Okay, so you are now a plugin bomb maintainer. Congratulations. Welcome to a very elite group. That's wonderful. Thanks for being willing. We release the plugin bill of materials about once a week. We've been using a rotating assignment as to who the release lead is. Uh, we haven't made it systematic yet, but Bruno Verachten has done it periodically. Russell Crow has done it. I've done it. Adrien Le Charpentier. Um, who else? And now we're adding Darren Pope and you. And there are several other people who are also maintainers. So in the README right now, there is a, an overview of several different things. How do you use the plugin bill of materials as a plugin consumer? So this one you're probably familiar with because of your work on the GitLab plugin and other plugins. It just, this is how you include it. You use this syntax and off you go. The, the, the development part, for those of us who work on the plugin bomb, in order to update a plugin bomb, a plugin in the bomb, we rely on Dependabot. It, it does a very reasonable job. It submits pull requests and we see those pull requests in this form. 
So here's one that's proposing to upgrade the credentials plugin. Here's another one proposing to upgrade the warnings plugin. Uh, if we look at closed pull requests, you'll see many, many others, right? It's, we, we see 10, 20, or 30 in a week. And they are, they are configured that if the, if the very rudimentary test that runs as part of this passes, it auto merges. So the, the plugin bomb maintainer doesn't actually have to do any, any work to keep these things up to date. When they pass, they merge. However, we are, in order to save costs, we are not running a larger scale test with these. And because we don't run a larger scale test, then once a week, when we run the large scale test immediately before delivering a release, we may find problems. And how you diagnose those problems is described here in the, in the instructions, right? On, hey, how do you diagnose what happens? Oh, okay, it's this is a way to watch the failure. And then when you've seen the failure, you, you then have to go deduce, why did this test fail? What's, what's changed that this test used to pass and now is failing? And a pretty common pattern is when a test fails, it's because there was a change in the plugin or in some other plugin that is related and that change has to be reverted meaning that the attempt to update the plugin bomb gets turned away like this one is, right? So if we look here at, let's look at this one. It was the first in the, the set. What happened is this analysis model API plugin was detected as causing test failures. And that detection then was noted here describing this is how it's failing. This is why it's failing and asking for specific action from the plugin maintainer to investigate it. And so that's, and then as a bomb maintainer, I put in play, we, we actually Basel Crow put in place a block that says, don't update this thing because if it gets merged, it will uh, fail tests again. So that's why he has, requested changes on this dependabot pull request. Questions so far, Chris? Nope. Okay, so Darren Pope and I are will do this same kind of exercise tomorrow, and I suspect he and I will record it as well. Okay. So, and we're going to do a, a how you do a bomb release, because how you do a bomb release is you launch a job on ci.jenkins.io and watch it if it passes. Then you come back to the plugin bill of materials and you run the GitHub action that says do the release. So you run this, this CD GitHub action after confirming that the tests pass. Okay. So, and we'll, we've, as part of this, work that Darren and I are going to do, I think he and I are going to want to split this documentation in the way that Basil Crow has suggested, where he gives specific guidance on, hey, this is how, how we do debugging when, when something goes wrong. This is how we back out a regression. So something broke and we need to alert the maintainer and safeguard the plugin bill of materials so that it's always passing. And then if we have a known issue, how do we handle known issues? For instance, you'll see here, we had to put a workaround in place. And this tells us, this issue reminds us once this change is merged, then we can remove the workaround. So it's, it's that kind of a maintenance process where when, when these changes emerged, we will, we will then remove the ugly workarounds or remove the workarounds from the, the plugin bill of materials. Okay.
that was a very lightweight, very fast moving. And you're welcome to read the documentation here and experiment with a little. It's, it's certainly been an interesting and fun experience for me to watch how the plugin bill of materials lifts a bunch of work away from plugin maintainers and centralizes it here where we, we, we can find a safe set of plugins that work that are expected to work well with each other. All right. That's all that I had, Chris, anything else from you? Okay, then let's stop that recording.